Hi guys, Dr. Hampton here. Welcome to my channel. And I'm here with the co-founder of Low Carb USA and uh, a, a volunteer for the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners, Pam Devine. So happy to have her here. You know, with so many people recognizing that reducing carbs is key to helping us achieve metabolic health, I thought it would be helpful to make sure you have access to the many resources that are available to you. So I asked Pam to take us on a little bit of a tour of those wonderful websites uh, that she and her better half, other half, Doug Reynolds, helped to create. So so I want to start with um, Low Carb USA, but before we get started with the website, I just want to hear a little bit about the motivation for you to, uh, and, and Doug to create that organization. Yeah, we, we um, started looking at the low carb diet, which we don't like to call it a diet. We like to call it a lifestyle about six years ago. And um, we were talking in the previous podcast about um, living, working in a very stressful environment, working in a corporate environment, and then doing this for ourselves and seeing massive benefits, some of them that we didn't expect. We also didn't really know what we were doing. Um, we, we didn't have a lot of guidance. There wasn't a lot of things online six years ago. Um, there were some, but we wanted to add to that um, resource. And um, some of our previous experience um, in our corporate job was planning events and doing, doing some content and I had learned some marketing kind of thing. So I kind of knew a little bit about doing this. Um, we wanted to be coaches first. I think that's what we wanted to first support people starting lifestyle. But then we had some background and we thought, well, why don't we invite the experts to our town to um, give them a platform to share their research, their clinical experience with the public that would like to come so we can raise more awareness and um, educate more. We quickly became uh, aware that it was really important for us to reach the medical professional. So we really um, have a lot of content for both the public and the medical professional who is also part of the public. But um, we just really wanted to have those resources for the practitioner to have as well. That's awesome. Now, uh, I'm going to go to the website and I love, you know, the first image is building a professional community dedicated to addressing obesity and metabolic health with diet and lifestyle. And so the first area is about us and we have the mission of the organization and some testimonials. So I can see that the organization was founded in 2015 and it, again, focused on dietary education and support by hosting scientific conferences, providing online coaching, a comprehensive library, uh, speaking to what you just said, of scientific papers support, supporting the way, the way of eating, and a worldwide database of low-carb friendly health care providers and nutritionists. So, and it has its founder, uh, your partner in crime here, and that's Doug Reynolds, and it, it also has yourself, and it also has, a, you have a marketing manager, Chris Cornell, and of course, uh, Jess Dudley, who is a blog author, along with Christy Sullivan, a uh, contributing blog author as well. So what's your thoughts about um, this first part of your website that kind of speaks to, uh, again, the mission and the testimonials? Yeah, it, it you know gives us gives everyone a little bit of background um how we started and some of the personal reasons why we started as well as the professional re reasons how we wanted to reach more people. Um it's really important for us to realize that this is actually very inspiring for us to do. I don't know if it comes through on how you read this um but us to be able to provide these resources to people to give People like yourselves who are listening, whether you're um, a patient, um, you haven't become a patient yet, you're just looking for a better lifestyle, or you're a practitioner, that we're giving you hope that you can find resources like that that are going to help. Um, we talk to practitioners all the time. They write to us or we meet them at our conferences or online like this. We like to tell people stories. And they tell us all the time that they may have become frustrated or were losing hope because they didn't have the information that they 
needed to make changes, um, whether for themselves or through their patients. So it's just really important for us to get that message across here through our website. Yeah, well, um, again, I, I feel the passion in your voice. I feel the passion in Doug's voice. And I can see uh, you have a couple of testimonials, uh, Barbara S., and uh, another testimonial by Deborah Edwards. And, and it's just nice to hear from the patients who have benefited uh, from this way of eating. So I definitely think that the uh, inspiration that you guys are trying to show uh, shows through. And then we go to the next section. It talks about uh, news and resources. You have a blog, you have you know videos, and the, the blog uh, seems to have gives us access to some of the podcasts uh, that you guys have done. What kind of got you guys into this whole podcasting space? So it's interesting. We started out doing um, some blogging, some writing of things that we thought might be interesting or important. A lot of them at the beginning were about our conferences or who might be speaking, um, some of the scientific uh, information that got out there. And then we really started doing interviews on uh, YouTube to tell success stories, to tell people how they were improving their health, how they were um, incorporating this into their medical practice and what they were achieving, just so people could hear those stories. Um, somebody came to us and said, oh, I see you're doing YouTube uh, interviews and some uh, blogs. Um, wouldn't you like to do a podcast? And we thought, well, Doug originally said no. <laughs> he said, no, not really. Um, That's just one more thing that I have to think about doing. But um, if you get to know Doug, if somebody gives him a good enough reason to do something or provides him with some um, a nudge or some information or resource that might make it easier, he will tackle it. Um, and he continues to do so more and more every day, both of us. Um, we do it together. But they, um, you were talking, or, or we were talking in between this about the length of podcasts. And one of the things a person said was maybe your niche could be a 15 to 20 minute short mm -hmm. podcast um, right. because maybe it's just a tidbit of something to light someone's interest, to give them a little bit more, uh, a desire to look things up. And he said, Oh, maybe I could do a 15 to 20. I could probably commit to 15 or 20 minutes and right. keep it short for people. Cause he's one that will say he doesn't have a lot of time to listen to something that's lengthy. Mm -hmm. Although if it's fascinating enough, we'll both do both either. Um, we'll mm -hmm. listen to something short, look up some more information about it, or we'll listen to something that's really engaging that um, we really uh, connect with or, or are interested in. So um, along the way, they've um, gone a little longer than 15, 20 minutes, depending on the person that we're interviewing or the topic. But um, we have some of them uh, as a rule, we kind of try to keep them a little bit shorter. Um and they should be available on anywhere that you do listen to podcasts. They're available on YouTube. You can subscribe to either one. We, uh, you might get to um, our newsletter subscription. Um, we spend a lot of time putting content into our newsletter database um, and email out directly to you when things are new, when a new blog comes up, when we announce a new speaker at our events, et cetera, and things like that that, that come out that we want you to know about. That sounds like a plan. And obviously there's going to be some videos there. So I want everybody to check out some of the videos that are listed. I'd yeah. like to jump in and just say, if you go news resources, videos, there's a section of free videos. So a lot of that content is any of the um, content from our conferences that we've decided to make available post-conference um, as a video. Um Doug always puts his opening remarks. There's usually the final panels. They're unbelievable um two hours usually a session amazing lineup of um speakers who had presented throughout the weekend of our of a, a particular conference that could stay for that final afternoon and people come up and ask their burning questions that they weren't able to do during the conference and we've made those available there's a few um others that are extra talks in there and interviews as well from some of our first years when I scroll down here. Any breakout talks that have been done throughout a conference are also included here. Many um, are there. And then under that news resources video section, there is a something that we're really proud about and we want to make sure that you know is here as a resource. It's Dr. Robert Saivas giving his perspective. It's called Diabetes Understood. 
and it says a whole new look at the underlying cause of obesity and diabetes. So a lot of the things you talk about, um, and he really addresses something that we haven't talked about, but you have had other guests on uh, talk mm-hmm. about the addictive be- uh, component of carbohydrates, the addictive and behavioral portion of making changes in your life um, and how to do those and how to think about them. And um, as you listen to them, you might find different ways of thinking about things. You might find different tools and resources here. Um, we had dinner with Rob one night and we said, Rob, we've just got to record you sometime. We've got to get these thoughts into video content for people. And um, as they were talking, they're hopefully going to be turning this video content into something people can have, hold in their hand and read in a book and have to uh, go back and um, uh, read and have as a resource. So I just wanted to make sure we pointed that. Out. Absolutely. And I think that's extremely valuable. He'll definitely be a future guest on the podcast for sure. So I'll probably be nudging him to uh, join me. Um, I My assumption is that under products, you I, I see these uh, beautiful t-shirts, just like the one you're wearing. So I'm assuming that those products are there to help support this organization because you don't take you know funding from other sources is my understanding. So Uh, Is that pretty much what that's all about? People used to see our volunteer staff. So I just wanted to uh, remind everybody our conferences are fully run by volunteers, including Doug and I are mostly volunteers. Every conference that we've done, we've almost done 15. They're pretty much volunteer run. They're not for profit. We're not a nonprofit association, but I can tell you we have not made a profit. Um, Everything that we've put in, we financed ourselves. And we're still paying <laughs> a lot of that. Um, there's very little money that comes from these shirts. People just ask us when they see our volunteer staff wearing them that they would like to have something mm-hmm. that they can wear at home and out. So we're busy. Um, we just met with the company last week, expanding and um, updating some of the, what's available here because some of the items were discontinued or um or have changed. Um, Doug likes to wear the sweatshirts. People will see him wearing his Mm -hmm. sweatshirt and they'll identify with it and want something for themselves. I've always wanted a tank top that I can wear when I'm working out or when I'm walking. So we're going to be adding uh, women's tank tops. And I was thinking maybe men want to work out tank top as well. So we might add that Mm -hmm. just, um, and we have a talk with somebody tomorrow. He actually wanted to, um, get our logo and permission he wants to put something on his camper van um he's traveling he's become certified as a coach gone through the programs that we help with um through the uh, national association of sports nutrition so when we get to training you'll see that but as he's traveling in his camper van all over the u.s right now he um wants to be able to share the message and so he wanted logos and he wants to um talk to us tomorrow about more things like coffee cups and something mm-hmm. that I wanted to do myself because it would be fun to have one on your desk. I was just looking on my desk. Somebody sent me the, a cup that says the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners on it. I'd love it. That's right. So, yeah. Um, and yeah. People want and it, it does matter. Those little things matter. It, obviously, it helps to support the work you're doing. But just as importantly, it just reminds people that you know this this work is out there. And, and speaking of you know ways to get the message out under events, um, I see the uh, first thing listed there is the low carb uh, in San Diego, and I'll be fortunate to join you guys for that. So talk a little bit about the uh, categories under events, particularly the conference. I think making sure people are aware that the conference is coming up in August is going to be very important. Yes, yeah, so and we're very excited to have you join us and speak and uh, present um, your clinical experience, what you've learned over the years. We've got um, about 20, almost 21, 22 experts from around the world come and join and speak. It's always me in the background wanting to, wishing and hoping that there more people can hear this message. And no matter how many people are there, I always say, I wish more people were here because all the presentations are so compelling they're based on scientific evidence. They have amazing clinical outcomes that are laid out for everybody to see. We've had doctors come like for one, Brian Lenskis is speaking. And he said, you know, I was doing this for myself, for my own health. I found it um, through Jason Fung. i had been struggling to lose weight myself for many years. Um, he tells a story all the time about, you know, 
and him and Tro, they're now partners on the low carb MD podcast about being unsure about what they were recommending to their patients. Cause it just, it wasn't working for them and it wasn't seeming to work for weight loss and um, lab markers, metabolic health, the things that we measure, it wasn't working for them. So they were really getting, losing confidence in some of the things that we were able to tell their patients because it wasn't as successful. Um, we've had many doctors tell us that, they never saw this much diabetes, for example, in their practice. Mm-hmm. And it was getting very frustrating for them. And a lot of them want, were thinking about leaving medicine because they just didn't seem to be making the difference that they had gone into medicine to do. They wanted to help people and to tell people that a disease is chronic and progressive and that we're just going to have to keep giving you more medication was just so disheartening to them. So we hear stories all the time that they're finding hope from the education that they're learning. Um, Brian was doing it for himself that I started to say, and he was able to come to a conference like this and see, wow, there's a whole weekend of presentations of interventions and uh, talking about health health benefits that he didn't even realize that this could all do. Um, Changing lifestyle and and highlighting nutrition that can help improve lives uh, in ways that maybe he wasn't familiar with, maybe you're not familiar with. People have skin issues that clear up that they never thought that diet and nutrition lifestyle would help with Um, traumatic brain injury um, that they always say, oh, well, you know, we'll just take time. But maybe you can do something with nutrition and lifestyle that will help speed up that healing process. Um, Skin issues, eczema, um, psoriasis. It's always just told, you know, that you need creams and um, um over the medications that you need to put on to help that maybe something from the inside can um, take out something that might be affecting you um, that's toxic toxic for your system or just not um, good with your system. It's not processing. So it's creating inflammation and um, allergic responses and things like that. So things like that clear up and mental health something that people don't often talk to talk about in regards to nutrition. I mean, it's always seemed to be a chemical imbalance. Well, what creates our chemicals in our body, the food we put in the environment we surround ourselves with Um, uh, all the things that you talk about on your podcast, Tony, your environment, how do you change all of these things that create better mental health? There's a big conversation about, um, with Rob Sivas and um, Joan Iflin about the addictive nature of food. Um, Not just food, because most people won't overeat broccoli, but um, processed foods and carbohydrates specifically. And and, um, Rob Sivas talks about emotional management systems. So Tony, if you get a chance to have Rob on your show, um, on your program here, um, not using food to soothe, but, using um other things to soothe get outside Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. have great good relationships um move and get some exercise that stimulate those endorphins and dopamine and serotonin that processed foods do but but they actually end up turning that stuff off instead of in a healthy way doing that so just to um highlight some of that there's so much more if you would like to visit the page on um lowcarbusa.org and events and visit the San Diego page. There's a bio for every speaker as you click on them, you can see their background. Um, the schedule of topics probably won't be up for uh, probably two months, but you can kind of see as we announce things as they come along, you can kind of see what they specialize in and kind of see what the topics that the, they'll bring to the conference will be the exact topic probably won't be up for a little while. The CMEs, I, it looks like yeah. we get some CME credit. And I think for a lot of clinicians, mm. uh, getting continuing medical education credits is vital. And uh, so mm. I really appreciate that as well. I would also want to touch on coaching. One of my previous guests uh, on the uh, podcast was uh, a coach, Roderick Lambert. And he was able to share, you know, the value of having a coach. And and so I see you guys uh, are also, uh, you have a mentoring, uh, under coaching and training, you have a health mentoring program yes. and uh, you have, you know, so talk a little bit about the coaching program you guys are establishing. Thanks so much for um 
bringing that up. I, you know, so many people, um, there are many people who can kind of do this themselves or like Doug and I, we had each other. We could kind of like, he looked up a lot of information and told me things. But um, as I was saying earlier, we, we didn't, there was a lot of information that we, even we missed. Um, so a support program, not only for what do you do, when do you do it, how do you do it, um, what to eat and what not to eat, but mm -hmm. also um, when to eat it and a little guidance on how to um, adjust things when, if they're not working or um, there's a neat app, this um, program, it's, it's a program that Doug wrote with a little of my input for the Low Carb USA um, site. It was under our coaching from the very beginning. I was saying we went in wanting to teach people first. So we wrote a program and then we went into the conferences, but it was only in a written uh, tutorial and a company came to us that had an online platform and an app form that can come to a phone or a computer. So they've combined what Doug wrote put it into video form. It's beautiful. I couldn't believe his words were put into video form with um, Kristen reading a lot of it. And not only nutrition, teaching recipes, um, and then the exercise components. So Doug and I will be on in video form going, walking through different exercises with this slow maximum resistance training with Dr. Ben's program. We're showing you how to do it. And, um, video form as we do it. And Ben is often with us talking about it. Um, the, the hows and whys as well. Um, uh, there's a app section where you, ha you get connected with a coach. They're all trained through low carb USA and the national association of sports nutrition for all the low carb component. And much of it is done through the um, parent company, but then we oversaw all of any of the low carb nutrition and the exercise component there but you can take pictures of what you're eating easily text them to your coach um and then um get any feedback that you may need i always say as as much or as little coaching as you need obviously mm -hmm. um some people need more or don't want like somebody really like looking and saying you didn't do this you didn't do that obviously you don't want someone to do that but you want someone to hold you accountable and you want someone to be there to answer questions for you so yeah and there's some pretty nice testimonials here from people in our community who have used the program if people are interested the other thing about this is doctors like yourself tony can incorporate this into your practice and refer your patients to so we've got doctors coming on board who needed they don't have as much time in their office to talk to patients about lifestyle changes, all of them, you just don't have that all that time. So um, it can be or incorporated directly into your practice, or you can just refer to the program through here. Um, the fun thing about people really want it to say, Dr. Tony Hampton, they want to talk about protecting your nest. That can be done. It's just a conversation with the developers. And I, how I, but I love like this. Uh, being available because um, as uh, as my buddy Roderick uh, Lambert would say, um, you know, we all need coaching. And yes. um, I think that even if you think about Dr. Joan Ifland and the work she's doing with the Reset community, it's really a coaching model. I mm. mean, they have hours of programming, you know, 12 yes. to 14 hours a day. And you can literally listen in while you're, you know, washing dishes or driving a car. And, and listen to those Zoom meetings, but it's really coaching it that's is. making that program successful. So I think that that makes a lot of sense. And I really appreciate that you guys value coaching. And I'm really impressed with that idea. So, and then I also see uh, some training uh, for certifications. Uh, we mm -hmm. can get a low carb USA certification and others. So talk a little bit about the certifications that are available. So there's real in-depth training for practitioners like yourself, the doctors, the PAs, the nurse practitioners, the advanced practice nurses can also take nursing courses. There's courses uh, now specifically done by dietitians for dietitians to learn the theory, science, history behind recommended dietary advice what is being seen to be more beneficial than something else, as we talked about in our previous podcast. 
um, has, you know, um, evolutionary information. It's really need to really go back because we're so f- hyper focused on what's going on right now that when sometimes when we really look back at evolution and say, what were we eating? How did we survive as a species? You know, we didn't have refined flowers and sweeteners and things in packages that you could just go to the grocery store. So we, the covers a wide base of that in clinical uh, outcomes and data and statistics through all these courses. Um, talking about coaches is a really good coaching program. It's called the advisor's training. You may have to click on doctors, nurses, and all allied professionals to see the advisor training under mm-hmm. keto uh, health coaches. Um, there's two different ones. There's um, one through the nutrition network. All these courses are through our global training partners at the Nutrition Network. They're associated with the Noakes Foundation. We have so much confidence in the content of these courses. We go back and forth with them and what um, they have. We've recommended speakers for them that we know have um, really good experience, use very good scientific evidence-based information. But for the advisor course, it's even good for doctors like yourself, Tony, who aren't familiar with teaching behavioral support. Um, it, um, it's good for, um, so the coach is very valuable even for you to refer. Like, so this is a team of people, mm-hmm. right? You can't teach everybody everything you want to teach in all the you know, short amount of time you have. Many physicians, um, complain they only have 10 or 15 minutes with the patient. Um, our, obviously our healthcare models need, um, updating and changing. And hopefully one day they're not as influenced as much by insurance and, money and finances, that's a whole nother topic. But if um, the more that you can form a team of uh, people that you can refer people to, to support the patient in their success, to support others, because a lot of people, as we learn the benefits of this, we want to share it with others. So, um, and even the person that doesn't have a medical background can become an advisor and a coach because they want to continue. We all um, want to help people um, learn what we've learned. So you who are listening, you may want to, um, go on and help more people. This advisor's course is highly recommended. I took it myself. I'm a nutrition network advisor. I'm low carbs USA certified, and I'm working on my, um, society metabolic health practitioners accreditation, which we can go into later, but that's the beginning of that. Um, of that course. And the fitness and exercise specialist goes through our friends at the National Association of Sports Nutrition. If anybody has a real uh, fitness um, background or wants to go into that field, you get trained in coaching slow maximum resistance training with Dr. Ben and Jeff Cotterman at the National Association of Sports Nutrition, as well as uh, sports nutrition itself. So there's exercise physiology and the nutrition aspect of that. And then at the bottom, at the bottom, Joan Iflin, speaking of her, she has a program where she's teaching uh, addiction recovery specialists. That's that's really critical. And again, mm-hmm. these are the types of trainings that many of us haven't gotten in our clinical practice. Mm-hmm. So thank God there's a, a way to get that training. And ultimately, it ends up being some of the most valuable training because if you have a person who has a processed food addiction and you want them to adopt a new dietary approach, but they can't get over their addiction, they will probably not be successful. Yeah. Um, it's a it's, way to lead more people into success and to, and to break through those barriers that you might find. And um, I can't tell you how many people say I couldn't do low carb because I love bread too much. Right. But do you love do you love your health more than you love your bread? Or I mean, it's just a different conversation and a different right. way of mindset, a different way of looking at things. So there's That's valuable right. information in all of this to help address those kind of things that you might hear in your practice. Or if you wanted to be a coach to help other people recognize that there's a different way to think about things. That's right, and and I think as we think about it differently and we understand that these people are having problems. I Mm. think that that'll allow us it even I think the training even teaches us how to talk to people and how to, you know, you know, so I think those those are critical. And another thing that your website does, which I really appreciate, and I know that some of the links actually does link to the to the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners. As an example, if I click on clinical guidelines, 
uh, the it will link to the society, and then the society will provide an opportunity for us to uh, have these clinical guidelines. So, talk a little bit about why, along with the support of Adele Height, we were able to create these guidelines. Why do we need these guidelines in clinical practice? Yeah. So, um, Doug had Gary Tabs has spoken at many of our conferences. He's in. Um, internationally best-selling author, um, investigative journalist, and he had a relationship with Adele Height over the years. She had worked for Dr. Eric Westman. He was in her town. They actually met at a school function for their kids, and she learned um, low-carb from him, learned that she uh, got a job working with him in his office, met Gary along the way. Um, Gary knew Adele's passion, um, that she, because she had learned and seen the benefits helping so many people, she actually went um, and got her um, dietitian degree, continued on and got her master's in public health, got her, um, and then went on to get her PhD. So while she was working on her PhD, she had continued her conversations with Gary Taubes. It had stayed connected. She knew he was. Um, working on a book. It's come out recently in this last year, The Case for Keto. It's really based on clinical applications, stories from practitioners who have had struggles. Um, we've talked about barriers that they may have in patient care, barriers because their um, colleagues might not understand it. And then from the individual point of view, the patient who goes and maybe they've heard they want to try this or they're missing something in their healthcare that's not benefiting them. So, um, for example, they've been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. They've been told now it's chronic and progressive and there's not a lot that can do about it. It's going to get worse. You're going to have to take medication. But along the way, they've seen some information that maybe a low carbohydrate lifestyle will help reverse some of their symptoms or, and it's like, but their doctor doesn't understand it. Or they get conflicting information between their doctor, their dietitian, their certified diabetes educator. It's frustrating for us to hear about that. Awareness and education can do a lot um, and to bring those team members together. We're talking about that just a few minutes ago. The team needs to get on the same page, have the same information. So Adele um, and Gary suggested having a, a session at one of our conferences that talked about the, the um, it was called the feedback session for talking about and um, establishing a standard of care. Doug talked about that in his podcast. Maybe you can link to what standard of care is and how is that developed and what do physicians and dietitians consider standard of care? But Adele has been very passionate about listening to what practitioners need, listening to information that's in the public, delineating between the dietary guidelines and clinical guidelines. And that's a really big thing we've mm -hmm. talked about with interviews with her on both Low Carb USA and in the Society of Metabolic Health Practitioners. Um, there are videos with talking to her about this. If people want to learn more. Dietary guidelines are supposed to be for a healthy population, but they started using mm. guidelines that might have been for recommendations for somebody who has heart disease already. Um, and then it became low fat and low sodium for the whole population. Clinical guidelines are when somebody has high blood sugar, what do you do? When you want to implement a therapeutic carbohydrate reduction as a medical intervention, this is what you do. And this is the history, history behind it. This is de-prescribing medication that might be, that will need to be lowered because therapeutic carbohydrate restriction is going to lower blood glucose and blood pressure almost immediately. Um, so it has guidelines for de-prescribing medication and um, much more that people might want to know about side effects, any comorbidities that might be needed to highlighted. Um, a lot of, some people will hear a lot of times about restricting carbohydrates might be, or eating animal based proteins might be bad for your kidneys that can be addressed in guidelines, things like that, where people can look up. Actually, I think that's something that I asked Adele to add to this because it's in her thing that she wrote for the diet doctor CME. 
It has a, a thing about kidneys and I want to look in here. It's a 20 page document. It lists all the people who contributed to it um, and it's available to anybody who wants to download it um, to print or email as a resource, keep in your office in a binder, um, have discussions about because it's and we started in on low carb USA, but we wanted it to have a home on a society for practitioners. Um, so it's available through low carb USA, but it takes you here um, for that yeah. practitioner. It's very support. helpful. It's very helpful. Um, again, when you're a clinician who uh, deviates from the traditional guidelines and you want to do it this way with the approach towards uh, carb restriction and metabolic health, it's nice to have some guidelines that uh, allow a clinician to follow some rules of engagement. And that way they can do it in a safe manner because everybody has uh, different ways that they've come to this information. Yes. So if we can kind of put it in a in the context of some type of standard and then reduce the variation, not only will it help that clinician make the care he provides for his or her patient safer, but it'll also provide a little cover uh, so that you're kind of doing what the standard is. And I think that's the model that we want to follow. That's why we have guidelines in the first place. Not that yes. it would restrict what you do, but it just provides guidance. And we want to guide clinicians in a, in, a, in a space where the information hasn't been broadly shared. I also see an opportunity uh, to assign a statement of support. Talk a little bit about why you guys have a way for people to support uh, this way of thinking on your website. Yes, and we want this list to continue to grow. So if you're watching this, you um, read these guidelines, you're supportive of the mission of these being available and a low carbohydrate therapeutic carbohydrate uh, lifestyle for as an intervention. And you, we want the list to grow so more people are seeing the validation of it, that people all over the world are using this, supporting this, contributing to and this um we, we may update it if some science comes, you know, that gives us a little bit more information. Everything's here that um, it was all done as a team effort. We had feedback from the community of practitioners like yourself who are using it. Um, and they signed their statement of support. It's just a more validation for the person who's um, learning or unsure or as we continue to grow this information to have that uh, statement of support grow and grow and grow and more people to know about it. And I just wanted to point out, maybe you see on the side here, it's translated into eight different languages currently as well. Mm. So this can be used worldwide. It's not just um, in English. It doesn't, uh, it's already translated into uh, clickable versions of two different versions of Spanish. So as we know, uh, we've got uh, European Spanish over in Spain. We've got uh, South American Spanish, which, you know, the dialects will change a little bit, but we've got at least two versions, um, Italian, German, Portuguese, French, Indonesian, Malaysian. Um, it's currently uh, being translated into one other thing that I'm not going to think of. I know someone in Russia that we've talked to, Turkey. And then there was a third one that I was just trying to remember, but I'm not going to. Doug has been talking with them. So if you are in any of the countries not listed and you think that you might want to contribute, it's a it's a big task. You could have a team of people that might be helping. But to translate these into other languages is really important around the world. I agree because metabolic dysfunction is all over the world. And we it's need to. It's not just in one place. It's, it's just not every, in one place community around the world, especially as processed foods and the Western diet continues kind of to expand into, we want to continue educational programs for nutrition. This Absolutely. Way. And I, I, I noticed that the last section is entitled science and there's uh, three categories, papers, articles, and great books. So I assume under uh, papers, there are some useful papers that we can read, some science to support some of this way of thinking. So talk a little bit about what we can find there. Yeah, we always um, think it's just so important to make sure that we keep up on the latest science um, research studies that are being done. This um, 
will continue to be updated. Um, I know that over at the Nutrition Network, Sarah Rice is compiling um, some impressive uh, database of research. So we were just talking with, uh, I was just talking with Doug uh, two days ago about how he wants to add a link to what she's been working on as well. But um, there's a category here um, talking about heart health. So something that always comes up when we talk about low carbohydrate lifestyle, if you're going to reduce carbohydrates and restrict them or reduce them and we want to add back fats and more animal-based natural fats what does that mean so a lot of people have a question and and they're confused about what to um, believe and what to recommend it's just investigate for yourself Um, look at the studies Um, cbd and heart health is here cholesterol and lipids even dave feldman is doing a lot of um, research into lipidology if uh, you're not familiar with dave and his name is new to you um look at um the cholesterol code and the work he's doing he'll go to the lipid association conferences and they're still they're like looking at him like what are you talking about it's innovative it's pioneering um research that's going to turn what we've all thought about cholesterol on its head um uh so there's some Zoe Harkums is like the third or fourth one on this main list. And she's just got some amazing um, research done into the recommendations of dietary recommendations of fat and the research that she's done. Um, the, we were going back, there's some stuff about the um, kidneys. There's more on insulin resistance, specifically inflammation, body composition, diabetes, all of these things are clickable through um categories if you're looking for anything specific you might be able to search on there for some of those things some of these are also migrated over to the society of metabolic health practitioners because we're just so um want science behind everything that um yeah because you know if you're gonna convince other clinicians to understand uh metabolic health and how you can change it with diet it has to be rooted in science and And then that'll lead to the large organizations following those perspectives as well. So I I think that's absolutely a no-brainer. And and I know you also on your side have some books and things like that. So there's some a lot of people are just learning, and and we're always learning. But the, you know obviously there needs to be certain things people need to read. And so thankfully you guys have some information, some recommended readings, so people can kind of catch up and and understand uh, what carb restriction can do for them. So we appreciate you having that as well. So this tour really, in my mind, added value to my life. And I hope those who are watching, it'll add value to their lives as well. So we'll, we'll I wanna thank you again, Pam, for the tour. And uh, for those who are watching, be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nests.